hospitals, which now has some critical needs. In terms of critical need, uh, how are we are looking at the very uh, seriously affected areas, and their needs range from water to basic commodities, building materials, uh, and we're speaking of plywood, lumber, generally, uh, roofing material, to enable them to rehouse themselves, to maintain themselves at this time with food and water, and also clothing. These are some of the most critical needs for the areas directly affected by the effects of uh, um, Hurricane uh, Thomas. St. Lucia has appealed for international assistance to complete a damage assessment and is also asking for financial aid. So as you can see in the background, the work that is under, being undertaken, this is only one location. There are several locations where the government has already commenced on its own, its own resources to attempt to reinstate the infrastructure because we value the significance, the importance of the infrastructure to the economy, to agriculture and to tourism because it is through the road networks that we are able to transport our, our, our bananas to the docks and of course transport our visitors to the various hotels and to the various scenes. So in the coming weeks we will conclude with the assistance of international agencies the macroeconomic um, assessment which will give a very clear and independent assessment not one that is done by the government but done by the international community gives it even greater credibility for consideration by international agencies and friendly governments once that is done then we do a donors conference and then we go out there onto the international markets you know, to appeal to our friends, to our international agencies for the necessary support because what has taken place in St. Lucia is really a severe blow to the economy of the country. Bananas, our main export crop, is wiped out by 100%. If we're to plant tomorrow, it will take nine months for us to begin to export uh, bananas. Root crops and other crops, 70%. So immediately you see the impact on the, on the agricultural sector. On the tourism sector, because of the critical problem of water, because whereas we have been able to reinstate most of the utilities, water presents a challenge, particularly in the north of the island. And we're hoping that very soon that water will be in place. Because without water, it means you can't run the hotels, you cannot operate your health facilities, you cannot operate your schools, business places are challenged, domestic um, sector is under pressure and therefore again in the water sector we do seek international assistance to assist us in reinstating our water system here in St. Lucia. The water supply needs of the country were also emphasized by Minister of Works Guy Joseph. Our biggest challenge remains that of the water sector and the reconstruction of roads we, we still have um, no school at this moment because some of the schools are still being used as emergency shelters. And as you saw, some of the schools, we still cannot get access to them at this point in time. So in terms of the assistance required, we, we would need most likely some technical assistance in, in terms of reconstruction and redesigning of lots of the communities and roadways within the country. Um, a lot of financial assistance is required in re the rebuilding process and getting us back on stream to where we ought to be. On his visit to St. Lucia and St. Vincent, the Grenadian leader held an audience with Mr. King and Vincentian Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. Honorable Thomas says Grenada will continue its efforts to assist the two neighboring countries and pointed to the urgency of helping St. Lucia in particular. The damage is quite uh, extensive. You see lots of um, land slippages and um, there's need for build, rebuilding, a lot of retaining walls and so on. And uh, we have seen the banana industry as we drove through. So whatever we could do, uh, as chair of OECS, we have some leverage and we could do whatever, whatever we could to access funding to assist in making representation on behalf of uh, St. Lucia and St. Vincent. We have always been trying to bring to the international community our vulnerability. And now we have seen it. We live in an area that is prone to disaster. And we need to get uh, funding for uh, adaptation, you know, we, uh, mitigation 
And uh, this is a situation whereby we have to really appeal to the climate change uh, sources and so on and see how we could access support to help the people of uh, St. Vincent, St. Lucia and uh, St. Vincent at this time. As Prime Minister Tillman Thomas, employment, scholarship opportunities and training were among issues placed under the microscope by young people during a youth forum at the current government school on Wednesday. The forum was organized by the Ministry of Youth Empowerment in celebration of Youth Month. Details from Abigail McIntyre. The St. David leg of the forum is the second in a three-series part to be held this month. It's an opportunity for young people to share their views, ideas and suggestions on matters affecting themselves and the country. The forum was attended by Minister for Youth Empowerment, Honorable Patrick Simmons, Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Dennis Lett, and other ministry officials. A panelist made up of the ministers and two youth representatives addressed the participants on a number of topics regarding youth development and empowerment. One of the panelists, Kwame Hippolyte, spoke of issues affecting the youth of the nation. In St. David, we have a number of youth who have qualified, yet they are unemployed or underemployed. They are denied scholarships in the area, in the, in the area that they desire. Oftentimes, youth would tell you that they would go to the youth desk, they would go to a number of areas, apply and they would get back to them and they are still waiting. These scholarships in some instances are given to persons who have yet to return to serve the country. Yet we see those who have worked and endured, made the sacrifices while paying their own way, return right back here in St. David's, right back here in Grenada to serve. Mind you, our youth in Grenada are not failing the system. The system is failing our youth. Participants questioned some of the policies and programs that set out for young people and gave suggestions to improve them. Made mention of a lot of scholarships being available. However, I would like to see the age, age range for these scholarships widen a bit. A lot of the scholarships are there for persons 25 and under, and youths are not only 25 years and under. So I would like to see the age range for scholarships widen a bit. Employment, which is a problem all over the world. All these things that Mr. Hippolyte um, mentioned, every country faces those challenges. But the thing is, how do we address them? For myself personally, I am unemployed. I am here on internship, and I don't get paid for it. And you know, when you go to a job interview, persons want five years experience, seven years experience. How do you expect me to be hired when I just left university after studying for what, three, four, five years, and you want me to, to come with seven years experience? And you know these are challenges faced by UB graduates, probably persons at SGU, I don't know. But you know, we really need to take a common sense approach to these things. And then we think about people leaving the region and not returning. Why? Because there's no opportunity for us. Because we leave here, you know, with our degrees and our associate degrees, our masters, and there are no job because we don't have the 10 years experience. What's the government doing? Are they offering internships? And I don't mean internships where it's only voluntary either, because if I don't have the sphere to get to work, I can't even volunteer. You said that you should be at the forefront of decision making. Therefore, my question is to you, why aren't the youth at the forefront of discussion making? Minister for Youth Empowerment, Honorable Patrick Simmons, responded. I don't know if that statement is a true statement. <laughs> because if you, if you take a look at what is happening now, we, the young people are really playing an important role in the decision-making process in the country. If you look, at the, if you look through, the, through the, um, the youth department itself, or the Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Sports, you will recognize that the, the services and leadership program is actually promoting and facilitating that through the ambassadorial program. We have a number of young people now coming to the fore and saying exactly what should happen and how it should happen. Even this, this activity here today, the youth ambassadors had a major role to play in that, um, in that area. In the ministry itself, the total outfit of the ministry of, of the youth empowerment 
department is young people, including the minister. But this year's Youth Month activities are guided by the theme, Youth Empowered to Action Through Partnership, Dialogue and Mutual Understanding. For the GIS News Hour, I am Abigail McIntyre reporting. That's news. Sports is up next. Recapping the main points of the news, government places greater emphasis on development of growth and poverty reduction strategy. CARICOM begins consultation on regional ICT for development strategy and government working on a plan to move Carnival from the committee stage to the corporate stage. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing.